Deji Ishmael wears many hats. Today, we'll be engaging him in his role as the regional mentor for the Project Management Institute. He holds the position across Africa. Hello, Deji, and thanks for joining us today. It's so good to have you with us. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you so much. In this role as PMI Regional Mentor for Africa, how would you assess the project management track record for Nigeria, across West Africa, across Africa as a whole? What are your views? Um, okay, let's start from across Africa as a whole. Um, project management across Africa is still one of the growth opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, some sectorally, some sectors in oil and gas and telecommunications, are doing, they're doing very, very well in, um, in terms of how they manage projects and the application of project management. Um, then there's some countries like um, South Africa and Kenya mm. who have, you know, they, they have developed their competencies in project management to very, very sophisticated levels. And that's, of course, attracted a lot of investment in those countries. Okay. Um, if we come down to West Africa, um, Again, those sectors are doing well, the um, oil and gas sectors and, mm. the, um, and the telecommunication sector are doing very well, even in West Africa. I think that's driven by the fact that they run a business where huge cost of investment and they have to get their returns. And that's part of what makes project management succeed or not succeed. Mm. So we look at across government sectors, which is a big player in West African economies, the adoption of project management as is, is almost non-existent, mm. really, across most of the West African countries. It's not the same in South Africa, because, for instance, South Africa has an, a national association for project management. Right. So that means at, 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 a, at a country level, project managers can be regulated. Right. They are bound by certain ethical standards mm. and all of those things. And that, you know, that means in terms of pursuing huge infrastructure projects, they have a high chance of sustainability over a long period. Nigeria, again, you know, across everywhere, you know, everybody is doing okay in oil and gas and telecoms, even in Nigeria. In more mature industries, basically. Yeah, mm. and, and that's because they have to understand that, and, you know, that's how they make their money. Right. So important thing for people to note is project management enables you to realize a return on your investment. Mm. Um, in Nigeria, there are opportunities for government. If government in Nigeria were to have uh, a higher adoption of project management, we'll see a lot more infrastructure projects get completed. Right. We're not seeing that at the moment. Mm. Um, people talk about project management. There's been a conference going on for over five years in seeking to get the government buying into projects. That's Promacon. That's Promacon, yeah. yes. It's been going on for five years. And also, um, some of you might be aware, there is... Um, a bill with the House of Representatives to also do what has been done in South Africa to have um, to regulate the practice of project management. All right. So those are significant steps. Okay. I don't have any idea on how long it will take, but those are significant steps in the right direction. But then, um, if you were to imagine that government in Nigeria, if government in Nigeria which is very big in West Africa, where to adopt project management as, as a standard, as a way of doing things, the benefit to the common man will be, be huge. huge. Immense. If Nigeria <laughs> gets it right, yes. West Africa will get it right, the mm. rest of Africa will get it right. Okay, so huge room for opportunity, as you've said, but totally. variable standards. Totally. You talked about the standard. We yes. understand that there's a new standard. I think it's a 21500 for yes, project management. ISO. ISO 21500. How do you see this impacting this region, especially West Africa and Nigeria? It, um, it, has a great, um, it has great potential to make positive changes because in Nigeria and a lot of West African countries, we've either talked about project management and we we'll talk about Prince 2 and we we'll talk mm. about um, PM, PM Project Management Institute and we we'll talk about PM Book. Yes. So, so um, those things are growing, people are getting certifications right. and improving their practice of project management. Okay. Because the ISO standard is um, built on, is really a great deal, it's about 96% compliant with the project management body of knowledge from PMI, it's not a great shock. Okay. It provides one language mm -mm. for project management practice. 
because a lot of countries, even in Nigeria, other West African countries, they understand ISO. Right. There's, an, there's a standard organization body in every country. To the average PM practitioner, what does it mean? What, what does, it means one language. It means it doesn't matter, you know, we stop talking about Prince 2 or, or PM Bulk or IPMA. Mm -hmm. It's taking everything and standardize so that every, regardless of where you go, so if you go and do project within the government, mm. they don't really have to say, you know, we want Prince 2 practitioners. Right. They can just say, we want people that understand and align their project management delivery with the ISO standards. So should we abandon all our certification efforts then? Um, you shouldn't. The I'll ISO tell you standard. why you shouldn't. It's because um, the ISO standard is currently, it's like a normative standard. So it, th th there are no tests. There's, right. no, there's no way to certify at the moment whether a company is compliant, is to compliant the standard. with the standard. Okay. Okay. Not like ISO 9001. Okay. So because of that, you know, there's still room for PMP and um, Prince, Prince 2, two mm. because the ISO standard actually recognizes the certifications, the, PM certi um, the PMI certifications totally, right. because it's based on a huge part of the PM book. So it totally recognizes that and it says so in the standard. Okay, so you see it as an inclusive standard. It's a totally inclusive what standard. What challenges, That's how what challenges do you think that the average organization or project management practitioner will face in trying to adhere to this standard, trying to imbibe it? Because, you know, standards could be yeah. something that a lot of companies that haven't reached a high level of maturity struggle with. What, what are the typical standards, that you, um, typical challenges, challenges that you expect us to find? Well, in this particular area, doing, um, it's almost like there, there are no real challenges for any organization that's already doing project management. Okay. The challenges are the challenges we face as practitioners of project management, the challenges of discipline, the challenges of understanding that projects really are there to help us to accomplish certain business benefits. So the challenge is in the mindset. Mm. In terms of implementing the process, it's common sense. If you've done, if you have Prince 2 in your organization or you have PMI, if you practice project management according to any standards currently in your organization, you're not going to have any challenges. What about those who don't? Now, for those who don't, they need the, the challenges, you know, for them would really be not ISO standard related challenges. It's about the kind of projects you run in your company. Is there a reason why you're running them? Is everybody united around what projects you should be running? Okay. So we'll talk about things like, you know, organize, what's the strategy of the organization? What's mm. the, what are the projects that the organization needs to run mm. to make sufficient returns for their investors. So if um, organizations really understand that project management is not, is not reactive, it's not just something to, okay, that is just taking money away, that there's that department that those guys are doing something <laughs> and they're taking money away. If people realize that it's and so they valid. begin to see the benefit, mm. then the implementation is very commonsensical. And okay. they're not likely to have any challenges. You know, the challenges of discipline and speaking a new language, they're very minimal compared to the benefits. Oh, excellent. I mean, Deji, you've been in this field for a long time. And there's some people out there who want to be project management experts. You know, they want to really get good at this. What advice do you have for them? Today? Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> My favorite question. <laughs> you can go for it. No, I mean, the, the opportunities are huge. Mm. Um, let me tell you guys something. Over, over the next 10 years, 12, trillion dollars is going to be spent on executing projects between, you know, actually not over the next 10 years, every year from 2010 to 2020, 12 trillion dollars is going to be spent on projects. Wow. For, for younger people than myself, a lot of people are actually retiring. So one of the demographics that we're seeing is there is a, there is a risk that we won't have enough project manager, you know, experienced project managers to deliver those projects. So if you're thinking of um, embarking on a profession that's totally exciting and has real prospects, then it really it's easy to get into. People will talk about if you have your first degree, then you have a subject matter expertise in that area. So there are associations like um, Project Management Institute, which have certification and of course, there's Prince too. They have certifications right. that people recognize. The essence of the certification is to train you in a baseline. You know, what is a project? What are the roles? And then, you know, global standards. 
and you get the certification. I mean, when I recruit project managers, a lot of people come to me and say, oh, I like project management. It sounds very interesting because mm. I'm always doing different things. And if they don't have experience, I kind of like really want them to go and get certified in one basic standard because then they understand why yeah. and the it's worth of project management. Correct. And then you, get, you give them the chance. You know, I'm not likely to hire somebody that talks a lot about being passionate about project management, but they haven't even like maybe, maybe sat down for the principal mm -hmm. practitioner mm -hmm. or done a CAPM. Right. So that's the starting point if you don't have experience. You right. know? And what, 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 something that's also good is a lot of people work in, you know, telcos and then they work, you know, you could work in the call center. It's a very good way of saying, okay, you know, let me get the certification because when the other part of the organization is looking for people to train on project management, that would be a natural choice. Uh -huh. And then they'll pick you up. So that's mm -hmm. a starting point. Right. Get experience. Try not to cut corners. Mm. Um, and be diligent. And one of the trends that's really becoming more important for us as project managers is some people talk, you know, you have conversations with people and talk about, are you Prince 2 or PMI? The reality and the truth is the business does not care whether you're Prince 2, whether you're PMI, or whether you're ISO certified, you know. Just we want delivery. business results. So oh, project managers deliver. really need to start thinking about, okay, this thing that I am doing, how does it add value to the company? And one of the things we're also, and it's very important, project management is about change, is about executing the strategy of a company. Mm. A company says, you know, let's say you're a microfinance bank and you currently have a license to operate in, Niger in Lagos. Yeah. And then you have a license to operate across all over Nigeria. There's certain things around marketing, around branding, around setting up offices that you need to do. Yeah. But the essence of that is to maybe increase revenue for your shareholders. So you've got to keep that at the back of your mind. Yeah. And some people would say things like, well, but I'm only a project lead or I'm only something. If you're not in the power to change things, then ask questions. Because the way that project management will be, will be recognized more and more is when we start to ask questions about, okay, to what end is this, is this goal? And you know, okay. just ask the questions because somebody may, may listen to you and say, you know what, actually maybe it doesn't make sense for us to be doing this at this time. Hmm. Maybe we need to be doing something. Hmm. But really it's important not to forget the fact that it's about realizing business benefits. Right. But we need some processes, we need the language, we need some tools, but they are not just for the purpose of having the tools and the processes. It's business benefits, totally. Wow, business benefits. I like that. And on that note, I think we'll end today. Thank you so much for your time. Huge opportunity. Deliver benefits. Get prepared. The sky is your limit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.